Hi folks, this is Anne with a quick anagram on building and running a C++ project from the command line with a make file. Uh, this video is in service to this particular assignment this week where I give you uh, a starter code and um, a make file and you need to learn how to build it from the command line. But this should be pretty general instructions for um, building on the command line with a make file in C9. So um, what I would have said even a few years ago to people is this shouldn't be very terrifying. Um, Linux command line is not that much different from DOS command line. Um, you simply have to type in some very specific commands and everything works fine. Um, however, one thing I've learned is that fewer and fewer people ever interact with the command line on any system. Um, DOS, DOS slash Windows, Linux, or um, particularly Mac OS. So I'm just gonna take this slowly. I think what I'm gonna do is not only show you how to build, build the starting code, but I'm gonna do a little bit of work um, in terms of adding support for middle names. And I will very naturally add, um, have some take mistakes so that you can see what error messages look like with this new build system and, um, and just sort of essentially how to proceed. Okay, so I'm here. Uh, my folder structure is going to be a little different than yours. What I have here for a demo folder will probably be your week 13. Um, and the subject of, of what's happening this week is that we have this new thing called a make file, um, which most of which you really don't need to spend a lot of time looking at in detail. It would make sense to read through. Um, we're gonna have a target called all, so we will make all. And basically what that does is gonna create an executable called name test. That's built from the object files from our two source files. So we have a, um, an object file, um, I'm sorry, a source file that will implement the name class. That name is, that class is declared in the .h file. And then we have um, a, driver test file with our main in it. And so this is the first time you're, you're seeing a source file in this class that doesn't start with main. Name test has main. Name test uses the name class. It includes the name.h file. And in order for it to work, we have to have object files for both of these source files and they have to be linked. And it's make files job to essentially be the traffic cop for all of that. It says when to rebuild things and what to rebuild. So um, in order to use any of this, um, we have to open a terminal window. Okay. And um, Jonathan showed me this this week. I've been doing this and split pane into two columns, but it turns out that if you simply grab this and touch this edge, it splits into two columns. Isn't that cool? And I'm going to go ahead and close this bottom pane since I have everything I need to work with here. I'm going to move this over so that um, I have as much space for my code as I can. And this is the Linux command line in your workspace. Uh, it tells you what folder you're in, which could be a little confusing. Um, your workspace is a machine, and when you are at your workspace folder, you're basically right there because that's the name of your workspace. So if I do a dir command at this point, what I see are these folder names. Okay. And in order to build this project, I have to navigate down to this folder on the command line. I do that with a cd change directory command. And um, those can be a little, you just have to be careful while you're typing and the operating system can give you some help. So I'm gonna type it manually once and then I'm gonna show you two other ways to get the right value in here if you're having trouble getting it typed correctly. So um, I can just very tediously type the whole thing. It has to start with, um, let's, let's always start with the full path even though maybe you could take a short but basically, we're going to workspace 
And inside the workspace, I want to go to the demo folder and a named object folder. And I want to end up in named object, demo slash name OBJ. Okay. And now if I do a dir here, I see the same files as I can see in my file explorer over here. Now, there are two other ways, two ways to make it simpler to type in that, that um, path. Um, one would be to um, get, get the operating system to help you with it. So for example, if I type CD and I start, and notice these are forward slashes, and I type WO, well the only folder that, is, that starts with WO is workspace. So at this point, I hit my tab key, the operating system will um, fill in that value for me. And if I type a D at the next level, because the only, um, the only folder is, is with a D is demo, um, I can hit tab again. Now, if I was trying to go to either sandbox or solutions, I would have to do an SA or an SO. So there's a unique version of that. But um, again, if I hit tab here, it fills in demo. And under there, there's only one folder. So if I hit tab, that gets typed in. And that way, you don't have to worry about spelling things. Um, the only other option is you can actually copy the file path. So if you have something that's buried really deeply, you can actually go to a file that's in the folder you want, OK? and copy that file path and over here on CD uh, on the, in the command line I CD and I can click right click on um, on a Windows machine paste and I don't want to go to the file but I can backspace and get to that and that's a relative um, that's funny I would have thought that would be a full full path I guess not. Okay, scratch that technique. Um, basically use either tedious typing or assisted typing on the command line to get to the correct, to the correct um, folder. Once I'm here, let's remember where we're at. We have a make file. And this make file essentially just says, if I wanna build name test, I have to build object files and then I have to link them. And, um, I'm going to make all. So this is a target and it's short. Um, I could probably type make name test, but it's simpler and, and you can always have an all target. So simply type make all. And if your code is correct, which the starting code should be, essentially you can see that we're compiling name.cpp, which has, which has the class definition in it. We're doing name test and then we're combining the output files for those into an executable, executable called name test. And this is something we haven't been seeing when we were using the magic run button. Um, I'm not sure if this file was being hidden from us or it was being um, it was being renamed as a .o file, which never made much sense to me. But at any rate, this is the actual executable that we want to run. And in order to run that, um, you have to use, you can't just type name test. I've tried that. Okay, and it says command not found. But if you do dot for current directory forward slash name test, it does run. So just remember that dot forward slash name test <coughs> and you'll see the short version of those three are on this slide but um, I'd like to take you through making some changes just so you can see what happens when you get error messages <coughs> pardon the cough so um, one of our goals here in um, in this exercise is to add support for a middle name. And um, generally speaking, you should always change the class um, header file, the declaration first. 
So this looks pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm going to just copy that line and change it to be middle. So now I have a first, middle, and last member variables. And um, you may notice that I have adopted um, a convention that, that is somewhat typical for these member variables just to help distinguish them because we don't use this dot in C++. Um, I've put a little m in front of each of them. And in your other code, you'll always be able to tell if you're referring to a member variable, a local variable, or a parameter because you'll see the, the little m dot. That's a convention. It um, has nothing to do with the language rules. Some teams adopt that. Some teams actually, and I, I've never been a fan of this, they would have this look like first underscore. Um, never made much sense to me. So um, having a little M in the front to think of it as a member variable, not, a, not the worst idea I ever heard of. So we have changed this file and um, Let's see. Let's go ahead and assume we're going to get a middle name here. Okay, and then let's compile that much. Um, notice I absolutely positively have to save these files manually. When you hit the old magic run button, everything gets saved. If you're building on the command line, it does not. So um, I'm going to do a save all. Come over here. And notice if I just rerun the built executable, I don't see any changes. I don't see any error message, anything like that. Because I haven't tried to rebuild, the old version of that code is, is still there. But if I go up and, oh, by the way, I'm not typing these commands. I'm hitting the up arrow. So once I have these commands, um, I've typed them in correctly, I can get back to them. And, um, and just let the system essentially type them. So I'm just using the up arrow to navigate, up arrow and down arrow to navigate between a set of commands I've already typed in. So I'm gonna type make all. Okay, and life goes to hell in a bucket, which is what we were after. So this says in, when I'm trying to compile name.cpp, okay, the prototype for the, um, constructor does not match the implementation. So the prototype for that constructor in the file included, okay, so this is the included file, um, doesn't match, okay, does not match any in-class name, which means the implementation file. So that's certainly true over here. I, I added the argument, this argument, to this parameter to the prototype, but I haven't added it to the implementation. So I'm just going to copy that, bring it over here to name.cpp, paste it in. So now I have three parameters in this constructor. And, oh, well, that's funny. I think when I was editing things before. This is not supposed to be M first name. This is supposed to be just plain first name. And it looks like I did a replace all and got a whole lot more changes than I was intending. I'll probably change the um, starting file and clean that up. Um, I think I can just do this here. me. Um, okay, so now I have M first, M middle, M last equal to first name, middle name, last name. I'm going to pick this line up because we need a middle name in the constructor too and set the default middle name to blank. And um, let me go back and change the prototype to be right. So you should get a, unless you downloaded very fast. Oh, okay. So that didn't get changed in here. First name, middle name, last name. Okay. And um, here we now match the prototype, which is correct. 
So um, I have saved this file and I should be able to come back here. Um, I have to click on that space in order to get used to, to get access to these commands. Make all, okay. It's still not building, so let's see, heaven six, where do we go? Um, oh, bonus Linux here, okay. If you type clear, you can get rid of the old error messages and see what your new error messages are. Okay. In main, right, okay. So we've moved the error on down. Um, we now have a constructor that wants three parameters. It matches its prototype, and, um, and that's all good. But in our file called name test, we are currently not handing those constructors um, that middle name. So we're just going to go ahead and You know, if you can remember to um, do all this the first time through, don't feel like you have to make mistakes. Uh, I just find that mistakes sort of follow me around and that um, I might as well show you what they look like so you don't think that you're doing something wrong. Um, mistakes are kind of how we work. So I'm going to save that. Everything up here is saved. And now I'm going to do another make all over here. Okay. And voila name test is building and both name and name test are building. So um, one thing just that you may see, uh, there is a target in make for cleaning, like basically getting rid of everything that's been compiled. And let me just show you a couple more things. If I clean, okay, the O files disappear from over here. This executable doesn't. If I ran it right now, it would still be whatever I compiled last. And um, now if I make all, you'll see that I, I basically do three building steps. Name.cpp to get the class object file, name test to get that object file, and then I combine those two .o files with a linker to get name test. Command lines look the same, but this is what the make file is doing for me. Now, if I change name test in some way, like I go back to that spelling error I had before, and I've just changed one character in one file, and I do make all, What I see is this target does not get rebuilt, and um, only name test get re gets rebuilt and the whole executable. And um, that may not, that optimization may not seem like much to you, but um, in, in very large projects, so for example, where there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of source and header files, um, and you're generating maybe several versions of a product. So for example, you've got all the same functionality, but you're generating you know, two, three, four, five languages worth of, of um, versions and or generating versions for different operating systems. So something that would run on um, Linux, Mac, and Windows. The build process can take hours and having a make file that can keep track of which files have changed and exactly what needs to get rebuilt is a huge advantage. So that all this high ceremony stuff seems like a lot of overhead for our little projects, but turns out to be um, really useful in the long run if you ever get to do work on a big project. So um, I have not finished the implementation of the middle name. Uh, basically, we now have a member variable for it. I don't yet have accessors for it, so I can't get my middle name. Um, the get formatted name function method is not is not handling middle name and certainly compared to is not. So there's still plenty of left to implement, but I just wanted to show you what errors look like and um, that you need to be not afraid of them. Hope that helps. Uh, I guess I should probably do one one more run of name test just to prove that it oh in case does matter if I type name test that doesn't work. I definitely have to get my capitalization rate. 
and I'm not seeing any different difference from that spelling error I put in there because I'm still not showing the middle names. Hope that all helps. Let me know if you have questions. Feel free to ask on Slack um, and I'd be happy to help. Thanks.